welcome to the Analysis of Winning Lineups podcast. I'm Big Italy 42 here talking about some big winners from Week 7 in the NFL. And FanDuel, obviously, this week was a little bit smaller of a prize pool, but first place still took home a nice $500,000 prize. So sure, there won't be any complaints coming here. And I'm going to break the lineup down for you. Starting off here, um, 224.32 points, three-point margin of victory over second place. And at the top, we had Andrew Luck at 8.8% owned. Was horrible in the first half. Really bailed himself out as, and he was not the only quarterback. We'll get to another one of those in a minute. That had a terrible first half and a great second half. Ended up with a decent game, really. Um, 360 total yards, 27 of them rushing, three touchdown passes. Did have a couple interceptions. If you watch the game, it didn't happen the way we thought it would happen, but he got there, and that's all that matters at the end of the day, especially for Brett G83, who uh, has taken down half a million dollars. Now, next up, Todd Gurley, 54.1% owned. The chalkiest of all chalk plays. The Browns run defense, the worst in the league, and uh, even worse now. He absolutely mauled them. It was ugly. 163 total yards, two touchdowns, most popular play on the slate, and it wasn't even close. And if you didn't have him... You were definitely behind very, very quickly. Next up, Lamar Miller, 8.5% owned against Houston. And the first half of this game was a blur. I mean, Miami just came out and absolutely pummeled Houston. They've looked great two straight weeks now. They were 41 0 at one point in this one. And Lamar Miller, despite really not doing much in the second half, 236 total yards, um, a score on the ground, and a score through the air. He was uh, he was this week's Devontae Freeman since Devontae Freeman was not uh, himself this week. He was fine, but he certainly didn't have this type of upside this week. Next up, T.Y. Hilton, 11.8% owned. And I, I was seeing, I was watching Red Zone. You see him, wide open touchdown, wide open touchdown. It was almost like the first half, the Saints just they wouldn't give up anything. Andrew Luck was awful. And then in the second half, they just decided not to cover T.Y. Hilton because it seemed like he was wide open every single time. He had 15 targets, only four catches, so... But 150 yards and two touchdowns, that'll definitely get it done. Next up, Stephon Diggs, guy that we heard a lot about all week long. People saying they were worried about his role. Maybe he would take a seat if Charles Johnson played, et cetera, et cetera. Well, all he did was have the best catch of the week. And if you haven't seen that one, definitely look that one up, the diving catch in the end zone. And he ended up with a solid game, went over 100 yards there, six catches for 108 in the score um, against that Lions secondary that's just not good at all. Next up, Julio Jones at 16.1% owned. 9 for 92 and 1. It's a solid day for Jones. Um, that's just kind of what you expect out of him, performances like that. Um, nearly had a second touchdown. They reviewed it and still didn't give it to him. I was a little baffled by that one. And then even more baffled by the fact that um, then the ball was handed to the fullback who was tackled. Then um, we saw Matt Ryan go ahead and throw an interception um, intending for Jacob Tammy in the end zone on fourth down. So um, it, was, uh, it was an ugly, ugly set of uh, events there. And uh, the Falcons definitely didn't play well at all. Did get the win. Julio ended up doing all right. 9 for 92 on a touchdown. Just good enough there. Next up, Ladarius Green. Uh, much like Phillip Rivers in this one, he did a whole lot of nothing until late. Ended up just four catches for 45 yards and a touchdown. But he did manage two two-point conversions, which, as you know, are with two points apiece. So that was a nice way for him to get over the, the hump there. And then next up, the guy who... Mr. Brett G probably owes a couple bucks to for having uh, the game of his life there. And that's Blair Walsh. Blair Walsh, five field goals, true Cairo Santos style here. Um, didn't quite get to that level. I think Santos had 27 a few weeks back. But Walsh did end up with 20, 1.4% ownership. Certainly set him apart in a big way there. St. Louis Rams were the defense. And as you knew, that was one of the chalk defenses, and rightfully so. 27.9% owned. Um, scored a touchdown early on a fumble by Josh McCown, and then they just continued to pummel the Browns. Five turnovers, four sacks. I mean, it was uh, it was ugly, and if you did not have the Rams, especially in cash games, it was uh, it was trouble for you quickly. Next up, Phillip Rivers against Oakland, and this is the other guy I was talking about earlier. We saw this with uh, with Andrew Luck. Horrible, horrible first half. In fact, I was looking at Phillip Rivers score at halftime. He had 0.48 fantasy points on FanDuel at halftime. I'm not exactly sure what the DraftKings one was. I didn't have him there, but um, ended up with a huge, huge fourth quarter in a game that was really well out of hand. 336 yards, three touchdowns, two two-point conversion passes. So Phil Rivers, unorthodox way, but certainly got it done again. 
Todd Gurley, 67.1% owned in the uh, the Millionaire Maker on DraftKings. And uh, I guess I should mention the name here. Guzzi52314 is, uh, is who took this one down. So obviously Todd Gurley, everyone had to have Todd Gurley. Nearly 70% owned, which is insane. But at that price, he was an obvious must play. Next up, Mark Ingram, 5.3%. He didn't even have 20 carries in this game, but ended up with 143 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Had two touchdowns stolen by uh, Kyrie Robinson there down in the red zone, but Ingram was still very efficient. Had almost 10 yards per carry in this one. Had two catches, only five yards, but PPR site, that certainly helps there. Two points. Next up to Stephon Diggs again. Like I said, um, he had a great game. you got to see that catch. And also, over 100 yards here, so he got the bonus as every other player Got the bonus um, on this team here as well. Next up, Mike Evans, 6.3%. Had a big-time game like he did last year against the Redskins. 8 for 164 and a touchdown. Um, it was a tough loss for the team, but obviously you don't get points for the, the win there with uh, with your wide receivers. So he certainly paid off in a big-time way there. Nearly had a second touchdown too. T.Y. Hilton, like I mentioned earlier, did have two touchdowns, both in the second half, and that was certainly nice for uh, – for Guzzi here in this lineup. Next up, Rob Gronkowski, 7.7% owned. Don't imagine we're going to see that low of ownership anytime soon again with Gronk. Um, once again, for the second time this season, Steelers did it too. Just no one covered the guy. They brought the house. The Jets brought the house to try to get to Tom Brady. Tom Brady just floated it over the top. And Gronk walked in for a score. Ended up with a big-time game, 11 for 108 and a touchdown. And then next up, of course, you knew this was coming, Lamar Miller. Um, was the flex play here, 236 yards, just absolutely incredible. And then, once again, the St. Louis Rams defense definitely uh, definitely got it done there as well. Same exact defense as before, and probably the same defense that you had in uh, most of your lineups there as well. So, if any of you are or know one of these two, I would definitely love to have them on for an interview. So, have them shoot a tweet my way at BigItaly42, or find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We've got lots of other great content for NFL, NBA, college football, NHL, everything in between. So check that out, and we'll see you next time.